Good evening. Uh, we want to thank you, as always, for tuning in for our lesson this evening. And if you will, go ahead and open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about prayer uh, tonight. And I want to, once we're done and once we conclude our thoughts, I, I want to leave you um, with a few challenges uh, in regards to prayer that I really hope um, that, you, that you will take advantage of in your prayer life. You know, we, we all want a closer relationship with God. And um, I've referenced this before, uh, even in a few of these videos, I, I think. But uh, the reality is, relationship, uh, the strength of a relationship is determined by the level of communication in a lot of ways. And when you have a relationship uh, that is weaker, uh, usually there is some uh, hiccup or, or something that uh, is causing the confu or causing the communication uh, to not be um, as uh, as fluent as it should be, to not be um, as often as it should be, and um, I think that when we think of our relationship with God, um, we kind of forget the communication aspect, you know, and we expect to have a close relationship with Him, but we cut lines of communication. Uh, you know, when you think of a husband and a wife, um, the husband and the wife are only as close as um, they will allow themselves to be through open lines of communication. If the husband only talks and never listens, or the wife only talks and never listens, if either party only offers their thoughts but never receives the thoughts of the other person, then that relationship is going to be dominated by one or the other and is not going to be strong. Uh, it's not going to be a real relationship. In order for a relationship to be strong and to grow and mature, both individuals have to be willing to listen and to speak. Uh, you know, we talk about the importance of listening, but there is an important aspect to our speaking as well. And so when it comes to our relationship with God, we have to realize that if we want to, to be close with God, if we want to have a stronger relationship with God, if we want our faith to increase, one of the ways that it grows and one of the ways that we have that strong relationship is through communication. There are times when we need to listen to God. And we do that through reading His Word and listening to what His message is through His Word. Uh, there are times in our lives where we have to stop, we have to take a breath, we have to be silent, and we just need to listen. And then there are times in our walk with God where we need to speak up. We need to talk. We need to open our mouths and do our part of communicating to God. Um, and that's where I kind of want to focus tonight. If you try to have a relationship with God, but you cut him off and you never let him speak because you never open his word, your relationship with God is not going to be strong. If you want to have a relationship with God, but you only do all the talking and you never listen to his word, you never open the Bible to listen to him, you're speaking all the time, it won't be strong. If you only read the Bible, but you don't pray in connection with that studying, then you're not going to have as strong a faith as you would like, and you're not going to be as close to God as you could be. And so tonight, I want us to understand that we need both of those in our lives, but specifically, I want to talk about prayer. And the way that I want to talk about it tonight, though, um, you know, talking with God increases your relationship with God. It enhances that relationship. It strengthens it. But I want to talk specifically tonight about praying to God for others. Um, you know, we we do a lot of complaining to each other about somebody else. Um, we talk to other people about the person that really frustrates us or infuriates us. And what I want to encourage us to do is instead of talking to someone else about somebody else, maybe talk to God for someone else. Um, you know, we pray for people when they're going through difficult situations. We pray for people when we know they're hurting. We pray for people when they have important uh, situations come up in their lives and they ask for prayers. But do we pray for people just to pray for people? Do we pray for brother or sister so-and-so just because we know that this Christian life 
can be difficult at times and we need to run with endurance and it's hard to run with endurance all the time and we need encouragement we know that prayer is powerful so are we praying for brother or sister so and so without them asking us and without us knowing exactly what they're going through are we just praying for them simply because they're a christian and we know they're doing their best for god and we want to pray for them and encourage them through that prayer prayer is powerful we pray for ourselves when we're going through things um, tonight i want to ask us to pray for others and i want to do that by looking at a prayer uh, that Paul uh, utilizes here in Philippians 1, verses 3 through 11. Your prayer life is important when it comes to your relationship with God. Um, you, know, you need to pray when you're hurting. You need to pray when you're struggling. You need to pray when things are good and you're happy and joyful and you're rejoicing. Pray in all those moments. You need to also take time to pray to God for other people. Um, not because they've asked you to only, but sometimes just because you want to pray for that person or that family. And in that prayer, it's not just the people that we like, but we need to pray for those that maybe we don't agree with or that we butt heads with. So um, let's, uh, let's look at verses 3 through 11. And after looking at these verses, I want to give you three main points to take uh, with you and give you uh, a challenge that has kind of two parts to it, uh, and then the, the lesson will be yours for this evening. So um, let's, well, I'll tell you what, instead of reading all of the verses at once, I think it might be better if we just read the verses that relate to each point instead of having to com come back and reread them. So let's, let's do that for tonight. Um, and the first thing I want us to realize when it comes to prayer uh, is... When it comes to praying for other people, and praying for ourselves too, but specifically praying for other people, have you ever struggled with that? How do we do it? The first thing I want us to do is make it a positive prayer. Make it a positive prayer. And all three of these points start with the letter P. Um, so hopefully we can remember that whenever we come back to trying to remember how to pray for others and, and, and how, how to pray for others effectively. Um, and so make it a positive prayer. First, uh, let's look at verses 3 uh, through about verse 6 here. Philippians 1, verse 3, beginning. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making, making request for you all with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Right off the bat, when you look at what Paul is saying here in reference to how he prays for the Philippians, notice the positivity as you go through this. I thank God upon every remembrance of you. I thank God for the memories I have of you and for the knowledge I have of you and what you're trying to do. Always in every prayer, um, he makes these requests, requests with all joy. And as you continue, for fellowship in the gospel from the first day till now, being confident, so confidence, you have this positivity as well, being confident in this very thing, he, who's, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day. There's all this positivity at the beginning. When it comes to our prayer life, our prayer life, first of all, needs to be positive because we have an opportunity to talk to God about what's going on in our lives. We have an opportunity to thank God when really good things are happening in our lives, realizing that those good things and those blessings are from God and are, uh, and He is the one that is responsible for them. We have opportunity in times of hurt and in pain to talk to God about that hurt and that pain and know that He is listening and that He cares and that Jesus, our high priest and our Savior, understands and mediates for us to God, talks to Him so, so that He can understand what we're going through. And through that, there should be positivity in our prayer life. Sometimes I think we come to God in prayer and we pray expecting Him not to answer. Or we pray as if we're just talking out loud and no one's listening, uh, but we do it just going through the motions. We need to be positive and confident in our prayer lives. Um, the Bible gives us very good reason to do this. And when you look specifically at verse 6, uh, being confident of this very thing, that he's begun a good work and you will complete it till the day of Jesus Christ. That there's this confidence that we need in our prayers, knowing that God hears, knowing that God answers, and knowing that that happens based upon our needs, not our wants. And um, 
we can't always see the full picture of what's happening, uh, but we only see what we're going through currently. And we talked about a little bit of that when we went through the study of Habakkuk. But for tonight, the first thing I want to encourage you to do is pray positively in your life. And specifically, pray positively in relation to other people. Uh, pray positive thoughts and positive things for other people and even for those that maybe you don't get along. Maybe I should say especially for those with whom you struggle to get along with, especially for those with who you butt heads with or, or you seem to, there, there's always this conflict between you. Maybe especially for those individuals, we should be uh, praying positively for them and for their lives. We never know who's going through what and in, in which situation they might be finding themselves in at this point in time. And so um, praying for other people, the first thing we need to do is pray positively for other people. And when we pray that positive prayer, be confident that God's listening and that he answers. So pray positively, number one. But not just that. We need to make that prayer a personal prayer. What does this individual's relationship mean to you? Or is this an individual that you do struggle uh, to get along with and you struggle to like? And so maybe you're praying for help in that area. But when you pray for that person, pray positively. And then also pray personally. Ask yourself, you know, reflect on that relationship. If it's a really good relationship, praise God for that relationship and thank Him for it. And if it's a relationship that's struggling, ask God for help and for wisdom. If it's a relationship that doesn't really exist because of the tension and the conflict between the two of you, then pray for God. Uh, pray to God for healing and, and for wisdom in how to handle the situation. But verse 7 helps us to see this. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of grace. Notice Paul's reference to the relationship between him and the Philippians and the love that's mentioned. I always have you in my heart. You know, um, I think that it's important for us to pray for our brothers and our sisters by name when we talk to God. I think that's important. And it's important to do not only when they ask for prayers specifically, not only when they're going through a very difficult situation in their lives, but to do it regularly just because. Because I would be thankful to know someone's praying for me. And so why don't we pray for our brothers and our sisters in Christ on a regular basis? Let's, let's make that a goal. And again, I told you I have a few challenges I want to give us at the end. But when I think of our prayer lives and I think of relationship with God, our relationship with God is strengthened through prayer, as I mentioned at the beginning. And our relationship with other people can be strengthened as well through prayer. Uh, obviously, through time spent together and conversation, communication there, but also through our prayer life, we can ask for guidance and wisdom and help in those relationships. So pray positively for others. Pray personally. Think about your relationship uh, when you're praying for those people and uh, thank God for the good relationships. Ask Him for wisdom in the relationships that are struggling, that need healing. Ask Him for wisdom in the relationships that don't exist just yet, that you uh, that you might find trouble uh, with this certain person and liking this person. Ask him for help in that area and for wisdom and how to interact so that you can grow uh, to, to get rid of whatever uh, tension there is uh, currently between you and that person. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters positively and personally. Um, and, and number three, we need to pray purpose, uh, purposefully. Uh, make it a purpose-driven prayer. And there are three er three things that are mentioned in verses 9 through 11. So let's read those as we think of purpose-driven. Notice what he says in verse... Uh, ver we'll pick up in verse 8 because we didn't read that verse yet. For God is my witness, how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. That goes back to that relationship and the love that Paul has for them. And, and he just he longs for them. And so... Uh, you see uh, why Paul prays for them. He, he just he cares so much about them. And then verse 9, And this I pray, 
So this is what he prays, okay? This is the specifics. He's praying. He's already told them how much they're in his heart and how much he appreciates their relationship and, and that he's talking to God on their behalf and he's always thinking about them. He's always mentioning them in his prayers. But here comes the purpose uh, purposes that he has when he prays for them. Here's the, the drive that he has. What is he focusing on when he prays? And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Three things I would throw out here when we think of making it a purpose-driven prayer. The first one is love. Go back to verse 9. I pray that your love may abound still more and more. A person whose love abounds more and more. I think in our prayer lives we should pray that for ourselves, that God helps us to be someone whose love abounds more and more. But I think it, it's important that we pray that kind of prayer for our brothers and our sisters in Christ by name. That I really hope that Brother Henry, um, that I, I hope that his love for you continues to grow, that his love for the church continues to grow, his love for the lost continues to grow. Grow. Do we do we think about those kind of prayers? Are we praying for the love of others to grow when it comes to their relationship with God, with the church, with those who are lost and need saving uh, from the go by the gospel? They need saving from sin. Are we praying for them to have this growth in their love? I think that's important. I think that's something we might not do often. A lot of times we might just say, pray for brother so-and-so, God, you know what's going on, and, and that's okay. Or we might say, you know, you know, please be with brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so and, and leave it at that. We might talk about their situation they're in. We might, um, we might thank God for the relationship, but do we pray to God and ask Him, God, I really hope that, that you... Uh, that you help Sister Sally's love for you grow, that you help Sister Sally love for this church grow and blossom, that you that you uh, help Sister Sally's love for those who are lost and need saving. I, I pray that you help her love to increase in those areas. Do we pray that kind of prayer? Paul says, I pray that your love may abound still more and more. Pray positively number one like we said pray uh, personally think about the relationship number three pray purposefully when you pray pray purposefully in relation to love when you mention those individuals by name mention them in in relation to love and God helping them grow in their love that it abounds more and more as were his words the second thing I see here in terms of purpose, he says that your love abounds more and more. He prays for their love. Then he prays for their wisdom. If you continue, and uh, your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment. A person growing in knowledge and discernment and approve the things that are excellent as you read. So um, looking through that and connecting it with our prayer lives for others. Praying that, that uh, this person's love will grow and that it will abound and just be more and more. And also that their knowledge will grow, that they'll have wisdom. Um, I think that's a, that's a powerful prayer. We ask for wisdom. Uh, you know, I, when we're struggling, I know that, that we ask for wisdom and, and help. Why not offer that kind of prayer on behalf of someone else uh, that you love and care about within the church or someone that, that you might label as an enemy, someone you struggle to get along with, why not pray, uh, not just for wisdom on your part, but for wisdom for that person, that their wisdom uh, is growing, that they, they are a person who's growing in knowledge and discernment, and they approve the things that are excellent. That's a, that's a powerful point to pray. And so I want to encourage you to pray that um, when you're praying for others. And the third point here, when we think of a purpose-driven prayer, so you have love, you have wisdom, and the third thing is holiness. As you continue to read, um, approve the things that are excellent, verse 10, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, 
being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. You know, I heard one person put it this way, righteous is what you are, but righteousness is what you do. And so if it's a person, as you look back, who's filled with the fruits of righteousness, they are doing good things things that are right with God. If we are righteous, we are right with God, doing things that are obedient to God, that are pleasing to God. So righteousness are those things that are pleasing to God. So for us to be doing these works of righteousness, they produce fruits of righteousness, which please God. So why not pray uh, for this holiness, this set-apartness from the world to a place of righteousness, from doing things worldly to doing things that are holy and spiritual and godly. Love, wisdom, holiness. Purpose-driven prayer. Pray positively, pray personally, and pray uh, uh, purposefully. Have a purpose-driven prayer when you pray for other people. So this is what I want you to do. I told you that I would give you kind of a little challenge for tonight. I want you to take some time, and um, I want you to write down five names of people where you attend worship regularly. Five people who are a part of the same congregation that you attend. And um, write down their first and last name. And then I want you to pick out two people. If you don't have two, that's wonderful at least one person that you don't get along with, uh, that um, you might have had some disagreements with, maybe heated disagreements, that there's conflict, or a person that you just simply don't like for whatever reason. And I want you to write that person's name down as well. And this week, every day from this Wednesday to next Wednesday, so not, not for the remainder of this week, for a full week, I want to see if you can do this. I want you to pray a prayer. For each of these individuals by name. Pray a prayer every day. Pray a prayer for the five people that you that you listed and for the one or two people that you are struggling to get along with, that there's tension or conflict between the two of you, or you just simply don't like that person. And when you pray those prayers, try to do it the way that Paul lays out here. First, make it a positive prayer. Think about the positive things that you can that you can list for this person, that you can ask for this person, that you can comment on about this person, and make it a positive prayer. Secondly, make it a personal prayer. Those five individuals that you have a good relationship with, think about that relationship as you're talking to God. And if it makes you smile, thank God for that relationship. Thank God for the uniqueness and the specialness of each and every relationship. And, and so think of that relationship as you pray. Be positive and be personal. Be very personal with each person. Don't make, don't make it the same prayer for every person's name that you wrote down. But think about each relationship you have with each individual. It's going to be different for each one. And as you think about that relationship, pray for that person in a positive way. And as you're praying positively and personally, don't forget the three purposes here that we have. I want you to pray that their love abounds more and more. It abounds for God. It abounds for the church. It abounds for the lost. Those three areas specifically. Ask for their love to grow. Pray for um, wisdom for them. And if it's a person that you have on that other side that you're struggling to get along with, pray for wisdom with you as well on how to interact with that person, how to get over this tense situation and to get to a place where you can have a good relationship with this individual. Pray for wisdom, not just for them, but for you in that moment, but specifically too for them. Uh, Pray for wisdom, but also pray for wisdom that it increases for all those individuals that you wrote down on the other side of the list. And then pray for holiness, that they are a person that seeks to, uh, to do the will of God and that they will never stop being that kind of person. Pray for these people, five people that attend the congregation where you attend. Try to pick people that aren't your family, okay? Try to, by family, I mean your earthly family, your physical family. Try to pick five people that are not blood family, that are not, uh, you know, family that are here uh, physically, just family that are a part of your church family. Five people that attend where you attend 
and one to two people that you just don't get along with for whatever reason. And I'm going to go ahead and put this out there for those two people. Um, if you if you pick two, one of at least one needs to be from your congregation. If you can only think of one person from your congregation, that's great. Put that person's name down, and then maybe think of one other person that you could put on the list that might not attend your congregation, but attend somewhere else that you struggle to get along with. Pray for all those seven people. For the next seven days, I want you to pray for all seven of these people. Pray positively. Pray personally about that relationship. And then pray that those people, uh, pray for their love, pray for their wisdom, and pray for their holiness. And in doing that, I want you to watch not just how God blesses your life because you're praying and talking to Him regularly about more than just blessing the food you're about to eat, but watch how God blesses their lives because you've been praying for them. And it's not something you're doing, but it's just that prayer is powerful. And it's amazing what happens when we purposefully pray for other people and we pray by name for those individuals. Watch what God does. Watch how those relationships between the two of you grow. I hope that something that was, uh, that was said tonight can be encouraging to you. As you go and read Paul's letters that he writes to different churches, it's, it's pretty evident his love for his brothers and sisters in Christ. And he always tries to find positive things that he can say, uh, even when there's a lot of negative that needs to be said. But he tries to focus on positive a lot as well. And when you look at the book of Philippians, he has a lot of positive. He has a lot of love for these brothers and sisters in Christ. He's very purposeful when he prays. He's pa passionate when he prays. And I think that we can learn a lot from the prayer life of Paul. The next time you read one of Paul's letters, at the beginning of the letter, pay special attention to what he says initially to that congregation of the Lord's people. Watch how he talks about them. Watch how much love he has for them. And may that help you to grow in your love for the church uh, that you serve currently. Um, we thank you so much for all that you do for the kingdom. We thank you for watching these videos each time. And if there's anything we can do for you, uh, we encourage you to please let us know. Uh, my cell phone number is 850-559-9575. If you need any kind of response to the invitation each week, if you just need to talk to someone or you just want to pray together, um, call that number and I'll answer and we can talk and we can pray. We can do whatever we need to do uh, to try to help you through whatever you're going through. Um, if you are listening tonight and you're not a child of God, you've never obeyed the gospel, you're not a Christian, uh, but it's something you've been thinking about and something that's been on your heart and mind and you know that you need to do it. Uh, if you're willing to repent of your sins, to confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and to be baptized this evening for the remission of those sins, for the forgiveness of those sins, to let them be washed away by the blood of Christ, then you can come up out of the watery grave of baptism. The Lord adds you to the church. You are His child. You are a Christian. You have a new name. You have new clothes, so to speak. And you have a new purpose. And now you have a new family. So if you need to obey the gospel, I encourage you to please don't prolong it any longer, but take advantage of the moment that we have right now to do so. Uh, if you are a child of God and you just need prayers, call me. And we'll pray together. We'll talk. And I just, if you're listening tonight, I just want you to realize whatever you're going through, whatever burden you're carrying with you, whatever weight is weighing you down, you were never meant to carry it alone. Not only do you have the help of Jesus and God, but you have the help of people who love you in his church. And so if there's anything we can do for you, let us know. We thank you again for tuning in. Uh, and um, as always, we say take care and God bless.